Where is the worst place to lose your virginity? Burger King bathroom. Three-way tie. Prison, psych ward, hospital. I lost mine in a laundromat parking lot. No car. No privacy. Just a parking lot at night. A group of guys pulled up to us with bats and knives. Ready to fuck us up. They thought we broke into their buddy's house. When they realized what we were doing and that we were in our early teens. They looked embarrassed. So did we. Apologized and left. We went right back to fucking. Teenagers are horny. Man. Porta potty. In the metaverse. Water slide. Whatever you think you can pull off during the ride. You'll be at the bottom long before you can finish up. Don't even try. Unless you're ready to face that consequence. And no. I'm not kidding. I've seen people try that. Not only is it highly impractical and an easy way to hurt yourself. There's just not enough time. An average slide from top to bottom takes about 11 seconds. If you want to accept that challenge, be my guest. But unless your name is Barry Allen, you probably can't pull it off. But hey, prove me wrong. It'd make for a pretty interesting brag story. Or not. Depending on your which part of the story people focus on. Family reunion. I had a friend who lost hers on the lawn of a retirement home. Her friend wasn't too far away. Losing hers too. Edit. This was an odd thing to wake up to. For more context. They were in their teens. Two couples. Walking back from a house party. Probably had consumed a fair amount of alcohol. And I guess they decided right time. Right place? No senior citizens were harmed in the losing of these virginitas. I don't think. Not mine. But a friend's he lost his in an abandoned warehouse on the floor and from what I heard it was next. To a dead rat as well. At your uncle's poker game. Not where. But when is during the halftime show of the 2004 Super Bowl where Justin Timberlake pulled off. Janet Jackson's shirt and exposed her breast so when your girlfriend's dad comes home and asks if. We saw the halftime show and you unemphatically say. Sure. Yay. It was great. And then he becomes suspicious and checks all of the trash cans and finds a bloody. Condom and then physically throws you out of his house. My first girlfriend and I lost ours on the beach. Seemed like a romantic idea going into it. But it got messed up multiple ways. Brought a sheet to put down. Turned out I grabbed a fitted sheet. Brought a candle for romantic firelight. Forgot a lighter. It was windy and chilly. Sand got everywhere. And the actual sex lasted about two seconds. Because I had the brilliant thought that it hurts the first time. So I'll stick it in as quick as possible to get the painful part out of the way. Q2 seconds of penetration and 15 minutes of consoling my poor girlfriend. A friend of mine lost his in a graveyard. He and the girl didn't have their houses available. And the car was tiny and had no backseat. So when driving by a graveyard she was like, how about here? He said the event itself was fine. But he had to relocate when they first laid down because he was on top of someone's memorial plaque. Yeesh. Denny's parking lot. In any kind of water. Swimming. Splashing around in a pool. Jacuzzi. Anything where the actual thing happens underwater washes all the lubrication away. Ensuing discomfort for all involved. Gynecologist. At a Nambla convention. Confession booth. At my house but the doors were unlocked and my extremely religious aunt came over and so I had to. Hide the guy in the closet and she opened the door and I was like oh we were working on a physics project and I was worried you'd freak out if I had a guy over LMFAO. Oh my aunt told my whole family for a year I kept getting asked at the family gatherings, you got any new boys in your closet? SMH. The Blue Oyster. At your funeral. I lost mine on a random stranger's couch. On an active racetrack. The back of a Volkswagen. Mary Shelley. Who wrote Frankenstein. Lost her virginity to her future husband Percy B. Shelley on her mother's grave. Noted feminist and women's rights advocate Mary Wollstonecraft. Edit. 
A few folks are asking for proof. HTTPS lithubcom slash did mary shelley actually lose her virginity to percy on top of her mother's grave slash she and percy went there one night where they professed love to each other then p shelley wrote the day after that he had a new real birthday apparently wollstonecraft also married godwin in this cemetery Shelley used to hang out there a lot for reading. Dates. Probably also sex. Etc. So it's possible it didn't really happen but it seems strongly suggested. Since people didn't usually write letters at the time saying, I had sex, but rather wrote in. Euphemism. IIRC. I believe Percy was married at the time. To someone else. Both Percy and Mary Shelley were fascinated by death, cemeteries, corpses. Frankenstein doesn't portray the monster as a hideous thing, but rather follows its sentience and learning. An ultimate rejection by Frankenstein who fears his own knowledge, taking responsibility for what he created. It's also noteworthy that Frankenstein digs up bodies to build the monster. As a teen, p. Shelley used to hang out in cemeteries trying to raise the dead. And as someone else in the comments said, M. Shelley kept his calcified heart after he drowned in the Mediterranean, after a fight with his longtime friend Lee Hunt who wanted to keep it. Hunt met up with them in Italy. I've published scholarship on writers from this time period which is how I'm aware of it. The story of them having sex on the grave is often repeated in biographies you read of either of the Shelleys, if not as fact, then as something probable and as a point scholars used to talk about Mary Shelley's relation to her mother, whom she didn't meet, died either in childbirth or while she was still an infant, I forget. Edit 2. Just to add further, both Percy and Mary Shelley and their compatriot Byron were considered sexual and political deviants. Being one was often assumed to mean the other. Mary's father Godwin was part of an extremely liberal political circle which is why he and Wollstonecraft didn't marry for quite some time, as someone in the comments said. A free love, sort of sentiment was part of it. Godwin was essentially as radical in his beliefs as was possible back then. P. and M. Shelley would share his and Wollstonecraft's politics. P. Shelley, Byron, and Hunt would all be criticized viciously for being deviant men. P. Shelley saw the belief that men and women are inherently different as the core disease problem of all Western society. A lot of his poetry advocates androgyny, combined sexes.